a few items like this skull, these guys down here, I bought it at various stores. But my witch's head and these two fun jack-o'-lanterns as well as this bird not that guy and these two fun jack-o'-lanterns down here sitting next to this mermaid and don't forget these two Those ones I made in my garage. Hey guys, it's Ken. How are you doing out there in the world today? How is 2020 treating you? I hope you are doing well, staying safe, keeping your mind together, and not going crazy in the midst of this really, really strange times we are living in. Teaching, I'm a first grade teacher for those who don't know that. Teaching in this world with my students face to face, my students at home, and keeping everybody learning and engaged at the same time safe and healthy, as well as myself and my colleagues, my coworkers, it's been an exhausting mental challenge. So for me, the creativity spark has not been there, uh, but I'm forcing myself. I'm saying, Ken, put the computer down, close the laptop, walk away from the classroom, and do some fun creative things for you, my own mental state. Not that I don't love teaching, and I love creating lessons and reaching out and making the impossible happen. I heard a quote from The Walking Dead this past Sunday, and it said, uh, it is what it is, which is a famous, oh, it is what it is. And I said, no, don't say it is what it is. Say, it is what you make it. So I like that. A quote from Mr. Walt Disney who said, it's kind of fun to do the impossible. So here we are doing the impossible, making it happen. But at the same time, I need to take a step back and recharge the creative batteries. So that starts today. One of the things I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around, as many of you might be as well, is the cancellation of Halloween Horror Nights. So I thought I would start there. I need some Halloween Horror Nights fun. In the midst of this pandemic, I created a second YouTube channel. And this one is titled, Theme Park Flavors of Vegan Adventure. This new channel is a little more targeted and specific. So we explore the storytelling in theme parks and the creativity that goes on in theme parks. And while we're there, we, we devour some delicious vegan food. I'll put a link in the description box below to a video I did specifically for Halloween Horror Nights and Halloween Horror Nights history. That was a lot of fun to make. But I don't want to abandon this channel. I still want to have some fun here. So. Our project is going to be to build Halloween Horror Nights here in our home. And that starts with a theme. I love that all Halloween Horror Nights have themes. This year, our theme is... Pumpkins. Okay, not pumpkins, but jack-o'-lanterns. And that begins tonight. I'm going to carve this pumpkin into a jack-o'-lantern. While I'm doing that, I'm going to give you a little taste of the video I made a short while ago on my other channel. Bridget and I have been big fans of Halloween Horror Nights since the very beginning. So I did a video showcasing some fun memorabilia pieces that we have, including some personal history that we have with Halloween Horror Nights. So I'm going to put that footage in right here. So go back in time and visit Halloween Horror Nights or as it was known back in 1991. Universal Studios Florida presents first annual Fright Nights according to this wonderful website called hhencrypt.com. It ran October 25th, 26th, and 31st. And this is an original ticket stub from that event that Bridget and I actually attended. I love the poster, dying for a good Halloween party. That was the catchphrase that year. All the icons were there, from the Wolfman to the Mummy. There are the dates, hours of operation, and tickets, $12.95. Or you can pay $15.95 admission day, which is what we did. There's only one maze listed here. I'm not sure if there were more than that. I don't remember. But the Dungeon of Terror was there in the Jaws queue. The maze description is a travel through a roadside haunt of gore and terror. And that's where it all started with that guy right there. No scare zones yet, but look at all the amazing attractions you could have seen. Those two are the only two 
remaining from the original lineup. What I love about this website, you can view events by year. This was the first annual. It wasn't until the second annual they titled it Halloween Horror Nights. There's the poster. Third annual Florida Halloween Horror Nights. This is interesting. The catchphrase was the third annual. It's not a very catchy catchphrase. Still no icons yet. Longer hours. And ticket prices here say unknown. But if you're watching this from hhncrypt.com, let it be known that we paid $21.15 to get in. That I did not have a ticket stub handy for the second annual. But I can prove to you that we were there because of this guy. Wolfman Jack. Special guest appearance of Wolfman Jack. Halloween Horror Nights 2. Right in front of the Mel's drive-in stage. So we stood in line to meet Wolfman Jack. And there he is. We stood in front of Mel's drive-in and met Wolfman Jack. He took a liking to Bridget, so he just made this out to her. It says to Bridget, a very sexy person, signed it Wolfman Jack, and then made a fun little face over there. Cool. Okay, so we, Bridget and I, we attend the first annual Fright Nights, then we attend the second annual, then we attend the third annual. Well, after three years, we decide it was time to become a part of Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights history. One, two, three, four. Welcome to the fourth annual Halloween Horror Nights. This is an original. Congratulations! on our auditions. This is Bridget. It says, Welcome to Universal Studios Florida's Halloween Horror Nights. The following information will be helpful and should answer any questions you may have about your employment. Yes, we were characters in 1994. She was a performer A. We got a whopping 5.65 an hour. This just tells you about acceptable attire. For ghoul school, ghoul school was amazing. That's where they teach you how to be a character. So much fun. And this is her Halloween Horror Nights 1994. She was in an area called the Boneyard. This was her rehearsal schedule. The Boneyard is the grassy area where the stage is, if you know the layout of Universal Studios Florida, between... Jimmy Fallon, which was Twister. Then there's that big grassy area at the stage and Rip Red Rockets. So and the Boneyard was a wonderful outdoor area where they displayed very larger than life, big movie displays. Here's Bridget in front of the Boneyard. I remember they had like cars and tanks and they had an original yard hedge or tree from the filming of Edward Scissorhands. Let's check out the Boneyard, and then we'll talk about where I was. Phase one, the Boneyard. Guests enter the catacombs of a freshly excavated insane asylum. So there's Bridget in front of the Boneyard. And there's me in front of the Boneyard. So I was a performer G. I got a whopping 7.30 an hour. And here's where I was, in Hell's Kitchen. Guests are chased by a demonic butcher. Halloween Horror Nights 7. I like this here. The catchphrase, you'll never sleep again. Well, of course not. Not with that guy chewing on your eyelids. <laughs> but this was a year when they introduced a parade. Which I think the parade was one of the coolest things ever. And it was titled, The Festival of the Dead Parade. And it was kind of like a Mardi Gras parade. Here's the parade route, where they would throw out beads and Halloween candy and coins. So these are some original coins from that 
Amazing Parade. Halloween Horror Nights 7, there's that guy, that little creature right there, gnawing on someone's eyelid. 1997. I also have one here from Halloween Horror Nights 10 in the year 2000. And this coin has a jack on it. Pretty cool. Great memories. But one thing I do also love about this website is this. The countdown to Halloween Horror Nights number 30 in 2021. As of right now, we have 344 days, 1 hour, 7 minutes, and 13 seconds. And counting. Can't wait. But until then, we'll celebrate at home. I don't want the classic circle cut around the stem. I want to keep the stem and all the top intact. So we'll go back here in this area and cut a flat surface and then a hole for the lighting. And I think this should work. All right, we've got some digging to do. I'm not one who needs the inside of my pumpkin to be completely clean. I kind of like those little dangly pieces there. That's character. But that is a nice serving of pumpkin seeds. A little olive oil. Old Bay seasoning. It's a good snack right there. All right, Jack the Lantern is carved. We're all set to go. We have a Sonic Fogger or Sonic Mister. From what I understand, the technology behind this goes like this. There's something inside here that vibrates very quickly and it turns water into mist or into vapor. So we have a container right here to fill with water, submerge that into the water, the LED lights light up, and we'll see what happens. It's recommended to put this in the water first before plugging it in. Then I'll recommend running this unless it's in water. Here we go. In three, two, one. What about in the dark? And better yet, what about inside of a jack-o'-lantern? I went ahead and covered up the back by reattaching the part I took out. Cut a small hole down here for the cord to come out. Thanks for watching and tuning in. And I'll see you guys very soon for more Halloween fun. Bye.